Six ways to make you a hardcore writer. So, you've made peace with your gods, got your paperwork in order, fed the dog or cat or kids enough food to last them three months, and you're now ready to become a writer. Now what? Well, as previously mentioned, there are a lot of myths about writing, and while we already covered the ones that you don't need in order to get started, here are the ones that will really get you writing. So the point here is not to get you started on writing, because you're already writing. If not, who are you, and what are you doing in my house? Start writing, dammit. No, the point is to make you write well and write a lot so that you can get those manuscripts out the door and become wealthy and powerful and then suddenly remember who gave you all that and then repay me with your vast fortune. Well, that and because giving you something you can actually use will make you pay attention. And when I have enough attention, I win. That, that's how it works, right? 1. Your typing speed. Please think of some story that you can tell in 30 seconds and then tell it. You can tell it to anyone, but if you're planning on becoming a writer, you're probably sitting alone in an empty house about three days walk away from the nearest other human being, because you prefer it that way. But talking to yourself is totally natural for a writer, don't worry, you're not crazy. So just tell it out loud to nobody. It's okay, just press pause, I'll wait. Great, now tell the exact same story, but use all of 30 minutes. Frustrating, right? Having to tell something so slowly when you know it can be done so fast? This is what you experience if you cannot write your thoughts down as fast as you want to. It's the writing equivalent of being constipated and it's mental torture. And it's mainly about typing speed. See, if you type slowly, you may suddenly find your head filling up with ideas that can't get out and start just bothering you, like 15 different songs stuck in your mind all at once, and you'll start hating ideas, which is really bad for a writer. Oddly enough, nobody ever seems to want to talk about typing speeds, but those speeds are often what separates success from failure, and they keep you sane, or capable of pretending to be sane, which is really the next best thing. The good news is, you can totally train them for free. Just Google typing games or use the one I supplied in the description. It's my favorite. You should definitely train if you run under 10 words per minute, but a good speed for a writer is probably 25 or more. You can write good stuff at slower speeds, no doubt about it, but you may just find yourself getting stressed and impatient. Two, show characters. Quick, what's Harry Potter about? Star Wars, Twilight. Fun fact, if you liked the story mentioned, you probably answered something about what people do in the stories, like what their life is and what they did to change it. Harry went to a wizard school and made friends so that he could fight Voldemort. Luke learned about the Force and blew up the Death Star. Bella moped and mumbled a lot and then fell in love with a hundred years old dead guy. If you didn't like the story, the answers were probably along the lines of, respectively, elves and trolls and stuff, spaceships and stuff, or vampires and stuff, because you apparently used the phrase and stuff a lot. No matter what you answered, I'm impressed that you did it that fast. See, good stories tend to be about the people in them, so much so that you can take that story and put it in a completely different kind of world and it will still work. To be perfectly blunt, if you're not writing about the people in a story, you're probably writing an atlas or a manual or a cookbook. When you write, keep as much as possible focused around the people in your stories, no matter how you write. That doesn't mean you can't describe worlds or items or broad ideas. It just means that it's how those things influence your characters that really matters. Why? Because it's not a world or an item or a broad idea that's reading your story. It's a person, and persons tend to relate better to other persons. 3. All the feels Nobody is ever going to read your story because it's smart, or because you describe worlds well. Just like drug dealers and pop stars, you're not really selling your craft, you're selling emotions. This is why millions of people will ignore a brilliantly written movie about important topics, and instead go to see the next pathetic attempt at horror that has a lot of jump scares in it. Sad fact, people don't really want to think, they want to feel. Otherwise, schools would be regular party zones. If you can make something intelligent give people the creeps, or make them laugh or cry, or simply make them feel insanely smug about how intelligent they are to be reading your stuff, rock on, you fine piece of author you. But even if you're not the writing equivalent of quantum theory and socioeconomic simulations, you can still write great, or at least popular stuff, as long as you remember to keep the reader in the grip of some form of emotions. Essentially, every paragraph you write should have a sign over it flashing secret messages to the reader's brain about one or two emotions. Does your paragraph suggest that the reader should feel sad or even angry? Should the reader feel disgusted by a character or maybe intrigued? Whenever people talk about a story feeling flat or boring, they usually just mean that there was no emotion triggered in them when reading too many parts of it. This doesn't mean everything has to be drama queens on parade. A scene can simply convey an emotion of casual contemplation or a character's unease about a choice. 
Again, if there is no emotion in significant parts of your story, you're probably writing a reference book or a summary of what might be a better story. 4. A story. I can just hear you now, because I control your microphone, saying, <laughs> Well, of course a book needs a story, you silly internet person, you. That's not my point here. You can make up a story in a minute, too, if you're ambitious. Knowing what you now know about how writing is mainly about having characters interact with the world and with each other, and how the real selling point is to make readers feel something in as many scenes as possible, you really only need an excuse to get the ball rolling. In the classic kind of story, that excuse is often called a MacGuffin, a word that seems to have been coined by Alfred Hitchcock himself. A MacGuffin is something, usually out of the ordinary, that gives everybody in a story an excuse for doing things. But it doesn't need to do much more than that. The classic MacGuffin is some secret documents that a spy has to get to his agency, causing people to hunt him and all other kinds of shenanigans. But if you look at most stories, they basically all work like this. You and you and maybe you go fight each other. Why? Because, insert MacGuffin. In The Lord of the Rings, it's the ring. Duh. In Harry Potter, it's Harry's admission to Hogwarts, all prepared by his dead parents before the story even starts. In Twilight, it's Edward's inability to read Bella's mind, which makes him insanely attracted to her. Yeah, even the diehard fans probably don't really remember the last one that well. All you really need to get a story going is the characters that you want to see fight, or caught up in a conflict of some sort, and then a somewhat sensible reason to have them fight. Of course, how they actually fight, and what they hope to achieve, and especially what ends up going wrong along the way, are all what the story will likely be about a lot of the time. But all you really need is to have some kind of conflict to put your characters inside, and a reason for that conflict to flare up. 5. SUDDENLY NINJAS! This is an idea that has been around for a while, but it really is more than it pretends to be. The basic thought is that if your story is starting to slow down and get a bit boring, suddenly ninjas appear, maybe hundreds of them, and start a big fight just to get things going. For the vast majority of stories, of course, this is completely stupid. However cool it might sound, having a romantic western suddenly feature hundreds of ninjas everywhere might upset the avid western reader a bit. But behind the ninjas are EVEN MORE NINJAS! You can never be too prepared for ninjas. But behind the idea of it, there is the idea that something dramatic can happen at any point and that it will grab the reader. TV soap operas are infamous for having someone suddenly claim to be pregnant or to be someone else than people thought they were, followed by a dramatic sound. When writing a story, SUDDENLY NINJAS can mean that a boring spaceship docking scene is rewritten a bit to make it quite dramatic, maybe due to technical issues or a stray meteorite striking something. It should have a relation to the story, of course, perhaps giving an idea of how shoddy the ship or station is, or how chaotic that area of space is. If everything is clean and tightly run, SUDDENLY NINJAS could come from the ship being boarded to check for suspected contraband. In the end, proper SUDDENLY NINJAS is a way to make something exciting and to pick up the pace of a story that's slowing down. And it can be anything, as long as it's sudden, to both the characters and the reader, and has a certain degree of shock value. It can even be written in afterwards. For example, the spaceship scene might only be noted as pretty boring when rereading the story. That doesn't mean that a quick rewrite can't make a dull description into a brief, heart-pounding scene when SUDDENLY NINJAS! 6. Fix it in post. This is the ultimate thing to keep in mind for any writer. Your work does not have to be perfect in the first try. If you can actually pull that off, all power to you. But odds are that you're wasting time wondering if you're currently writing the best possible thing you could be. In short, never allow yourself to worry about that. It drags you down, mainly because you're unable to actually see the value of your story while you're writing it. Things will come along and change the meaning of what you wrote, characters will evolve, you'll get ideas, and so on. That's why you need to just keep writing your story and tell yourself that anything you worry about can be fixed later. Now, this might mean that you end up deleting a whole lot of pages just to rewrite them, that's true. But if you do it because you have something better, then it's a win. The pages you didn't write at all, because you were nervous that your first draft might not be perfect, are time completely wasted with nothing better to show for it. They also tend to take up far, far more time than simply rewriting sections, or even an entire 57 pages of an unfinished book, when you have the right idea you felt you were missing. In other words, never stop writing, especially not because you're being your own worst critic. We all want perfection, but perfection doesn't exist, which is why... SUDDENLY NINJAS! Bye!